You know, the recent clusterfuck surrounding Masters of the Universe revelation really got me thinking, how many times do you actually have to run over a stripper before they'll die? Wait, what? Anyway, the more I thought about that show, the resulting fan backlash and tidal wave of negative reviews, and the excuses and personal attacks made by the show's creators, the more I realised that it's just another example of the same fucking pattern that plays out whenever someone decides to remake an old IP. As I observed in a tweet the other day, you can break this kind of franchise vandalization down into five easy steps. Step 1. Find a once popular franchise that hasn't seen any activity in a while, but still retains a loyal fan base you can exploit for cash. Step 2. Announce that a remake slash reboot slash revival is on the way, and confidently declare that it's for the fans. Step 3. Remove most of the key components that made it popular in the first place, and fill the gaps with a mixture of unlikable new characters and a heavy dose of identity politics. Step 4. Blame the resulting fan backlash on a small group of toxic trolls and reactionary man-babies, and dismiss negative reviews as an organised campaign orchestrated by the usual collection of ists and phobes. Step 5. Confidently declare that all fan bases are unwilling to accept change and growth, then move on to the next franchise and circle back to step 1. Not a great plan. They say the definition of insanity is repeating the same process over and over again and expecting different results, but that seems to be Hollywood's MO these days. Again and again, studios dig up the corpses of old franchises, go on to debase them in the worst way possible, and then act surprised when longtime fans vocally complain about it. It's a bit like serving someone their favourite meal at their favourite restaurant, except the meal has a big steaming turd on top, and the serving staff are all wearing red and white check gingham dresses with arms. Boots. I was just doing a little test. A little test to see if you'd gone crazy. <laughs> Honestly, it's almost farcical how many times this shit's happened. Ghostbusters, Terminator, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, and now Masters of the Universe. The list of franchises that have been destroyed or badly damaged seems to grow longer with every passing year, and I guess the question I keep asking myself is, why? Why do people never learn from this shit? In fact, why even remake stuff in the first place? Well, the last one is probably the easiest to answer, and it neatly explains step one of the process. The benefits of reviving an old IP are kind of obvious. There's a built-in audience that's hungry for more content, and that's pretty fucking important now. We're kind of drowning in a sea of entertainment these days. There's so many TV shows, movies, miniseries, and fuck knows what else that people don't know what the hell they're supposed to be watching now. And any original property that does come out is up against so many competitors that its chances of success are about the same as a homeless man getting into a high-end strip club. And believe me, I know all about that. Which brings me along to step two. Remaking or rebooting something that's already well known is a surefire way of attracting desperately needed attention. It becomes your unique selling point, something to help you stand out from the sea of bland, generic shite floating all around you. And in theory, it should be a win-win situation for everyone. Fans of the IP should be happy to see their favourite franchise gloriously brought back to life revamped, improved, and modernised. It's like being reunited with your high school sweetheart, but instead of the boring, middle-aged marketing consultant with cellulite, stretch marks, and high-functioning alcohol dependency that she's turned into, she's young and beautiful and adventurous again. The studio should be happy too, because not only do they benefit from the work of previous generations and get the chance to bring back something beloved by people all across the world, but they also make a shit ton of money to pay for their drugs and hookers. Everyone should be a winner, but it all depends on one thing, not fucking it up. And this brings us to the most crucial point in the process. See, people tend to be kind of protective of stuff they enjoy, and they naturally get pretty nervous when someone fucks with it. Now, it's easy for bitter, lonely, cynical people who've never loved or cared about anything in their entire lives to write this sort of behaviour off as fan entitlement. I mean, how many trashy articles have you read bemoaning yet another fan backlash to an unpopular remake of an old IP? But the truth is that it's got less to do with entitlement and more to do with basic human psychology. People naturally form attachments to things that they invest a lot of time in, and the more they invest, the greater the attachment, especially with things that made a big impact on them at a young age. Watching Star Wars as an impressionable young kid for the first time is a lot different from watching it as a grown man with a lifetime of 
of other experiences to water down the impact, and as a result, it stays with you. Naturally, fans like this tend to seek out other like-minded people to share their enthusiasm. They form social media groups and fan clubs, they build websites, write fanfiction, buy merchandise, and go to conventions. It all adds up to a strong sense of investment and emotional attachment, and the natural result of attachment is protectiveness. Imagine that I gave your favourite childhood toy to some random stranger with the vague promise that he's going to do something very interesting with it. You're probably going to feel pretty nervous about that, but then imagine how you'd feel if he totally fucked it up. <laughs> Which brings me neatly along to step 3, the point at which everything goes wrong. There's no easy way of saying this, but a lot of the movies, TV shows, games and comics that were made by previous generations just wouldn't get made today, mostly because they contain stuff that's now considered problematic. Strong, capable, heroic male protagonists? That doesn't play out too well today. Traditional femininity, beauty and sexual attractiveness? Forget about it. Minority characters with even a hint of racial insensitivity? That's a big red flag right there. Platonic same-sex friendships? Are you kidding? Storylines that imply women are physically weaker than men, or require them to be rescued? No fucking way, sunshine. Basically, there's a lot of unwritten rules about what you can, or more importantly can't, include in modern storytelling. It's a bit like living in the Soviet Union in the 1950s, where artists were forbidden from producing anything that criticised or contradicted the official state ideology. So it is in modern Hollywood, where there's few quicker ways of ending your career than expressing any thoughts or ideas that go against the, the message. message. Now that's all great and everything, but the obvious downside is that it doesn't leave writers with a whole lot of artistic freedom. It also means that old franchises being remade today have to have every problematic element carefully screened, removed, edited or censored, and replaced with stuff that's deemed politically acceptable. Which usually means destroying or compromising the very things that made them popular in the first place. And what you're ultimately left with is a bland, dull, sanitised, politically correct modern story shrouded in the vanilla ear of a classic IP. The reaction from the fan base is predictable as it is intense. It's anger. Usually it starts with social media, then quickly moves on to review aggregator websites, and from there to YouTube. Before they know it, the creators of the remake are being swamped with angry negative feedback, and because it's the internet, well, it's usually pretty extreme. And since nobody likes being told that their work is shit, or the negative career repercussions, the predictable reaction from creators is to lash out, insult the fans as ungrateful toxic haters, and dismiss negative reviews as some kind of coordinated campaign. Pain. The ultimate result is that everyone ends up pissed off, everyone's fighting with everyone else, and a once popular franchise has become just another online battleground. The fans get to see their cherished IP tarnished by a poorly conceived remake, and the creators lose money by alienating the very people they should be appealing to. And so the cycle repeats itself. Unfortunately, it's also a bit of a self-perpetuating problem. The more times this happens, the more sensitive and defensive fan bases become, and the less receptive they are to the idea of modern remakes at all. So what the hell is the solution here? Well, first of all, there needs to be a cultural shift in how stuff like this is approached. Movie studios are businesses, and like any business, their job is to give their customers what they want. Not what they think they need, or what they want to give them, but what they actually want. So who is the customer here? Well, it's not the perpetually offended serial complainers of Twitter, or the activists posing as journalists, or even young people that have never heard of the franchise before. It's the people that have supported it for years. In other words, it's the fans. Brie Larson might not care what 40 year old white dudes have to say, but you probably should, because if you're bringing back some old IP from 20 or 30 years ago, I can pretty much guarantee that they're your target demographic now. So now that you know who your customer is, the next step is to give them what they want. But what exactly do they want? Well, what they don't want is to have their expectations subverted, I'll tell you that for nothing. They don't want to see important characters race and gender swap for no particular reason. They don't want to see their favourite heroes pushed into the background in favour of some flawless, idealised replacement, or deconstructed, or held accountable, or any of the other fancy bullshit terms that people use to justify fucking up something that was already perfectly good. What they want is continuation, not revolution. They want to know that the characters they used to love are still awesome, and the world that they were once invested in is still whole and intact. 
In short, they want you to respect the fact that you're playing with someone else's creation and not trying to turn it into something it was never meant to be. Imagine if they remade Back to the Future, except Marty's now a black teenager named Loquatia and she invents the time machine without Doc's help because she's so mega smart that she doesn't need him and she uses it to go back to the 1950s to jumpstart the civil rights movement. And yeah, I know there's probably some Hollywood hack frantically scribbling notes right now, but be honest with yourself. Much as this satisfies the demands of modern writing, do you really think fans of those movies would want to watch something like that? Or do you think they would see it for what it is? A shallow, cynical attempt to hijack a popular name to push the story that you want to tell? People often use the term fan service like it's some cheap, dirty thing that no self-respecting writer should indulge in, but for the life of me I've never understood why. As long as it's done in good faith, what the fuck is so bad about giving people what they want once in a while? I mean, as a theoretical purveyor of entertainment, or just a plain old human being, isn't it kind of satisfying just to make people happy? Imagine how thrilled Star Wars fans would have been to see Han, Luke and Leia on screen together one last time, or a heroic Jean-Luc Picard going out in a blaze of glory, or even fucking He-Man being a brave powerful hero again. Basically what I'm saying here is that bringing old franchises back to life isn't inherently a bad thing. Thing. In fact, if it's done properly and faithfully, then it could be awesome. But that's the crucial point here, it needs to be done right. And that means staying true to the original, even if it doesn't always gel with THE, the message. message. Either do it properly or don't do it at all. But what you shouldn't do is wear the memory of some beloved old IP like a fucking skin suit to disguise the horrifyingly disfigured story beneath. Believe it or not, people can see right through that stuff especially the people who know it best. Which brings me on to my final piece of advice. Engage with the fan base for God's sake. Don't just sit there and tell them that you're doing this remake for the fans and then churn out something you know they're gonna hate. Take some time to ask them what they want to see and actually listen to their responses. And if they're critical of what you ultimately produce, maybe have the humility to step back and reflect on what they've told you. You'd be amazed how far a bit of mutual respect and open-mindedness can go in building trust between creators and fans. And if you need an example of how this can work, Consider what happened to the Sonic movie after that first disastrous trailer. The studio actually took fan feedback on board and delayed the movie by several months so that they could implement it. And well, the results speak for themselves. Anyway, I'm kind of aware that I've been rambling on this one, so my final thought is this. The fans don't have to be your enemy, and it's really not that hard to win them over if you show a little bit of respect and humility and have the courage to produce something they actually want to watch. Do it right and they'll be your greatest asset, defending and promoting your work. Do it wrong and well, the cycle continues. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.